Dan Radio Style, hope everybody out there is having themselves a great day. A lot of people come to me with questions. Dan, I've got this third party. How do I get rid of them? I've got this problem in my life. How do I make it go away? I've got some situation I don't like. How do I change that? There's a chapter in The Law and the Promise called Through the Looking Glass that actually speaks to this beautifully. We've got a, a lady that shares a great story with us where she had some major issues in her life, some major problems within her life, yet she was still able to get past it. And I think the key here is how we approach the problem versus the problem itself. So let me try to illustrate this for you. Let me share this through this lady's wonderful story. And then let's see where we can get with this. Two years ago, I was taken to the hospital with a serious blood clot condition, which apparently had affected the entire vascular system, causing hardening of arteries and arthritis. A nerve in my head was damaged and my thyroid enlarged. Doctors could not agree on the cause of this condition, and all of their treatments were completely ineffective. I was forced to give up my every enjoyable activity and remain in bed most of the time. My body, from hips to toes, felt as though it was encased and bound by tight wires, and I couldn't put my feet on the floor without wearing heavy hip-length elastic stockings. I don't know about you, I don't know what your particular situation or problem may be in your life right now, but that's pretty good, right? Like, we've got a lot of things working against us, a lot to focus on, right? I've got a serious problem, how do I make it go away? This next paragraph is key. And it's, I'm going to chat about it right after, but this is kind of beautiful how this plays out. I knew something of your teachings, and I tried very hard to apply what I had heard. But as my condition grew worse, I could no longer attend any of your lectures. My despondency grew deeper. One day, a friend sent me a postcard picturing the scene of a lovely beach by the ocean. The picture was so beautiful, I looked and looked at it and began to remember past summer days at the seashore with my parents. For a moment... The postcard picture seemed to become animated and flooding memories of myself running free on the beach filled my mind. I felt the impact of the bare feet against the hard wet sand. I felt the icy water running over my toes and heard the crash of waves breaking on the shore. This imaginal activity was so satisfying to me as I lay in bed that I continued to imagine this wonderful scene day after day for about a week. Now where I want to stop right off the bat is one... Never once did she remember or focus on her problem. She was staying in the moment, living in the end. She was in this reality and living it and enjoying it, focused on what she would like to experience, really, but not even doing it consciously. But that's what was happening. She was truly focused on the outcome that she desired. She was imagining the better life without focusing on the third party, the thing that sucks, the fact my legs don't work, right? All these things, that's not what she was focused on. The power of thinking and imagining something, Goddard talks about it frequently. It's when you, you consciously imagine something, like she did here, and then you get a feeling from it. It felt wonderful. She was enjoying it, right? It created that feeling. Well, that feeling is what the subconscious mind grabs and manifests for you. Unknowing to you, it, t- it does it because of that emotion, that, that feeling that you gave it. So by her focusing on this reality that was just wonderful, and even kind of almost a fantasy, really, at the moment, but by focusing on it, by feeling it with the senses, and then by enjoying it and just having that happiness, that, ah, oh, man, it would be, it's just so great. I love it. Never, wouldn't it be great? Isn't it nice? None of that. Just literally in the moment, enjoying what it is that she would like to enjoy, which would be running on the beach. And she couldn't. She couldn't even sit up and put her feet on the ground without pain or without any sort of issue. She had to wear those special stockings, right? So let's check out this last little paragraph. And then there's one more little section that Goddard kind of sums it up beautifully for us. And I think this technique, or not technique, but this way of looking at resolving issues in our life is key. And I think it's very powerful. So Like she said, she did this for about a week. One morning, I moved from my bed to a couch, and I had started to sit up when I seized with such an excruciating pain, my entire body became paralyzed. I could neither sit up nor lie down. This terrible pain lasted for more than a full minute, but when it stopped, I was free. 
It seemed as if all the wires binding my legs had been cut. One moment, I was bound. The next moment, I was free. Not by degrees, but instantly. Instantly. A week later, she was able to get herself into this place because she kept focusing on what she wanted. And she again, she wasn't doing it from that standpoint. She wasn't saying to herself, I need to focus on what I want. That's how you manifest change in your life. No, it wasn't that at all. Because even then, when you're doing that, you're still focused on the thing you're trying to change. No. She was completely in her head, in her mind, in her emotion, was in this place where reality was what she wanted it to be. She imagined what it would be like in that situation, the way she'd feel, the way it would feel on her feet, the jumping in the hard sand, right? The whole thing. It was never, oh, I should focus on this because, no. She just focused on what she wished. She had a, an imagination that was amazing. She like, essentially it was a fantasy, right? It was, it was fake. A lot of us are like, am I delusional? Ah, who cares? Spend the time in that place. Be creative with your imagination because of what it does. And here is where Goddard comes in and, and really I think hits it home. We walk by faith, not by sight. One more time. We walk by faith, not by sight. When we walk by sight, we know our way by objects which our eyes see. When we walk by faith, we order our life by scenes and actions which only imagination sees. Man perceives by the eye of imagination or by sense. But two mental attitudes to perception are possible. The creative imaginative uh, uh, effort, which meets with an imaginative response, or the unimaginative staying of the eye, which merely reflects. Now, that little part is kind of tough at the end. I get it. Man perceives by the eye of imagination or by sense, which means you're either imagining the world that you would like it to be, or you're looking at what's in front of you and saying, this is what the world is. One's creative, one's kind of more reflective. So what they're saying is, these are the two ways you can go about it. But the power of looking at it from an imaginative response, the way I kind of see it, there's two ways, right? By faith or by sight. One is going to change your experience. The other, you will experience your change. Kind of a difference. By focusing on what you would like to experience, by focusing on the thing that lights you up, gets you happy, the relationship with your specific person, this new job, more money, by focusing on what that is, what that's like, what is your life going to be like when you have this thing that you desire, this person you desire? What is life going to be like? How are you going to feel when you have that? Imagine it. Give it clarity. Who cares what obstacles are in front of you? As I've said before, obstacles are meant to be changed. They're meant to be worked through. Obstacles kind of define what we need to evolve towards. Obstacles are super helpful. So by focusing on where we'd like to go and who we'd like to be and what we'd like to experience, we take away the whole concept of what's happening right now. And what's happening right now is probably something that you would like to change. So by focusing on what's going on right now, by using your senses and keep noticing what's happening around you and keep paying attention to what's going on around you and to keep acknowledging how things are around you, well, you're going to continue to see more of that. You're going to experience the change, as I was saying. Now, the change could be slow, could be fast. might be the fact that you're focusing on this third party, so the change might be more of the third party. Instead of imagining being with your SP or having the job right now, by imagining that, by being in that moment, by feeling and experiencing and using all of your scenes and uh, and imaginations and senses and living in that reality, living it like it's your right now, living it like... She wasn't saying, one day I'm going to walk. She wasn't saying any of that. She was in the moment of walking. She wasn't even living in the end, technically. She was in it imagining present tense, I'm here right now, I'm imagining myself running. It's technically living in the end, kind of, right? Because she's imagining that. But from the standpoint of what she was doing, so many of us live from the end because we know that's what we're supposed to do. Not actually 
doing the activity of imagining being with this person, imagining how you're going to feel when this whole situation has come to fruition, when you finally got what it is that you desire. And of course, the gratitude that comes along with it. But again, you're not even, she's not, she wasn't even doing that. She wasn't using all the techniques. That's what's so amazing about this. She literally lived it in her mind. That's it. That's it. It shows the power of living the reality you'd like. Living it in your mind. Making it a present tense situation. Yeah, there's a lot of mechanics and I could explain. I could do a whole another 30 minutes on all the things that come together and why it works so well. But what's brilliant about this, like I said, is she's not focused on doing the technique. She's not focused on, I need to do this because. She was just living in the moment, feeling what it would be like to have her wish fulfilled. Living in that moment. Not doing it because it's a technique, doing it because it felt good, doing it because she got caught up and carried away in the imaginal scene, and then said, wow, that was so much fun, I'm going to keep doing that. Now, of course, keep doing that, she knows full well this is benefiting her, this is going to help, this is, it felt good. And in a short period of time, one week, suddenly she's able to walk. Suddenly, after a moment, probably freaked her out. Sure, that one moment, that one minute, right, where she couldn't even move. She's like, oh my God, I just broke myself. And then, bam, free. Free from all of that. So, the question I get from so many people, third parties in my life, what do I do? I don't have this job yet. What do I do? My boss is a jerk. What do I do? Uh, Someone else is applying for the job that I want. What do I do? What you do is you stop thinking about the stuff. You stop asking those questions. You imagine what it is you would like to experience. I don't care what obstacles are in front of you right now. Don't worry about those. There is a way around them. There has to be. Because you are creating your life. You are creating this new outcome. Focus on what you would like to experience Feel it with as much reality as possible. Get the emotional response within you, the excitement, the happiness, the all the things that are going to come with this. Feel that. That feeling is what, when you really get into that feeling, your subconscious just goes and makes it so. That is how you create the life you want. You cannot change what you don't like. What you can do is create what you do like, what you would like. There's a big difference because when you change how it is right now, when that's your focus, you're still looking at the thing. You're looking at the third party going, I'm going to change you, I'm going to change you, I'm going to change you, why are you not going away? Instead of having the third party be there, great. And then imagining I'm going to be with my person, my SP, oh God, just imagine we're going to go on that first date. We're going to be together in the movie. I'll be holding your hand, the smell of the popcorn, the sound of the theater, the chairs, the noises, the the people opening plastic, and you're like, right? The whole experience of it. I'm not, the third party wasn't even once in my mind during that whole process. That is how you make the third party go away. You cannot make it go away by looking at it. You can only make it go away by not looking at it, by stopping using your senses. Use your imaginal senses to create what you want. When we pay attention to how things are, you're just going to get more of that. So the way to get around it, live what you would like. Feel it. Bring it home. Bring it into your heart. Make it real inside of you. And that's it. Don't do it because. Don't do it. Uh, Don't don't try to come up with some specific scene because you know you're trying to change this thing. No. What do you want to experience? Think of that. Think of what you want to experience. Don't do it because, or do it because you love this thing and enjoy it. But don't, in the back of your mind, be like, all right, I'm doing this because I'm trying to make the third party go away. No, you're still looking at the third party if you're doing it that way. The third party thing will work itself out. That's maybe what you tell yourself. Yeah, no, that's going to work itself out. It'll work itself out. I'm going to be with the person. I really love this person. I love being with them. I'm in, I'm, right? And just start getting yourself back into that place or you're with your third party, or you're, or I'm sorry, you're with your specific person, or you're in your new job, or whatever. Take it from that angle. 
and you will be amazed at the way things start to change in your life. It can be that quick. When you finally shift your focus, you will almost immediately begin to notice differences. Dan Radio Style.